Okay, I want you to take a look at some of these photos coming up and let me know if you've struggled with any of these problems. If so, I'm gonna be able to help you out today. One of the most awesome things I've been able to do, transitioning from one point in my career to now being able to help and work with people in my online TIG welding programs is to help take somebody from learning from scratch or take some existing skill and make some improvements to get somebody some awesome results. In my programs, I have had students with zero welding experience. I have people I've trained that have worked in finance software engineers, all kinds of experience start from the very beginning of my program. And through a series of exercises, we can go through this stuff and they can get some serious results. So let's take a look at our first example here today. I'm excited for this. This is a student who I worked with over the course of my eight week program. His name was Alan, he absolutely killed it. I know you're watching right now, buddy, great job. So when we finally jumped into our lap joint exercises, I think this was about week five or so, he already had a ton of basics and fundamentals learned really well by this point. So we were actually able to make some adjustments pretty quickly to get good results here. Taking a look at this photo, what do you think it is that we worked on? I'll give you a second. We've talked about this a lot on my channel before. This is absolutely one of the most common things that happens with lap joints. Take a look at the bottom edge. When people first start working on this joint, getting the bottom line to blend nice and straight with proper fusion of filler material into the base material is very tricky. We can see here as we look a little closer, the bottom line goes in and out. And again, this a pretty good attempt for his first session working on them. After this, we started to get into the feedback. One thing we talked about specifically was the amount of filler material that was being used. We can see that some areas here, you can see them, they've been a little bit overfilled. And when something's overfilled, especially at the start, heat management becomes really difficult. We will have areas where the amount of filler material will stand up high and this will prevent our heat input from really getting into the base material and doing exactly what we need it to do. Looking at the center here at the stop start, we can see that this little bit of extra filler material has caused the bottom line to be held back quite a bit as we always talk about on this channel. What is the most important part of every weld? It is the start. What has happened here with excessive filler material? This is going to require extra heat input. So with more heat input, once we begin moving, we're gonna to start to experience overheating really quickly. And especially as we move towards the end of the plate or the joint like this, we can see that things get smoked out pretty quickly here. We don't really have the shiny finish that we want yet. And we can see that the overall consistency of the bottom line has been held back here and there. So with a lap joint, what is it that we want to see? Graphics. We want to see a clean and consistent bottom line to our weld. Look at that, nice and straight for the entire length of it. We want consistent stepping distance with our puddles. And we can see here from start to finish, the stepping distance is really consistent. And we want consistent and adequate filler material. So from start to finish, there aren't any high spots or low spots. We really wanna focus on controlled heat input, especially as we approach the end of a plate or a joint. Looking at it here, we can see consistent width from beginning to finish. This is really important with this one. Now, I hit Alan back with a ton of feedback on these details and a detailed plan of exactly how to get warmed up and ready to focus on these details specifically during his next session. And let's take a look at the results after the next session here. Right on, Alan. We can see that compared to the old photo here, the new results have a way better finish. Take a look at the bottom line as well. We see a big improvement on how straight it is and take a look at how good the stock start in the middle is on this one. Way more control, way better start, and we get a great bottom line because of it. Now, as we approach the end of the joint, we see a really big improvement on the overall consistency and the overall heat control. And compare the two, look at the old one again. Now look at the new one, look at the difference in the finish. These are some big drastic improvements that he made just by having a clear idea of what he was gonna go in and work on in the next session. Shows you how planning your practice sessions can give you some really important results. So if you're having problems with this area of your joint, focus on your starts. Don't overfill or underfill and do not begin moving until we see the profile exactly the way that you want. If it's too full, this is absolutely gonna be a problem as you begin to move away from this area because your heat input is gonna change drastically once you begin moving. On the flip side, if there isn't enough filler, you're gonna have problems with overheating right from the start. A moderate and controlled amount of filler with an emphasis of staying at the start until everything is perfect. Like we always say, fill and chill. And then once we begin moving, all we have to do is focus on the bottom line, making sure everything falls on the joint with proper placement. Once we begin moving, all we should have to do is just babysit details. 
The idea is to always have everything set up perfectly right at the beginning. Moving ahead, however, before things are perfectly in order, just makes for more variables you have to pay attention to as you move along. Focus on your starts, and anytime you start to see things beginning to go south, stop, assess what happened, reset, and then continue on. My program is designed to give somebody the skill and ability to break down their own work and make a rock solid plan of how to warm up properly and have a clear plan of exactly what to work on the next time they sit down for a session. Going into a session without a clear goal or without a clear or exact idea of what we're working on is gonna make it way more tricky to learn the advanced stuff. If you are interested in checking out my program, the link is in the description below. It's been a ton of fun of getting to work with and teach people. And I'm really thrilled at being able to provide examples of how I do this on my channel, as well as give advice to help people however I can. Now taking these examples and sharing them on my channel here, more people can enjoy them and hopefully learn as well. I'm gonna drop one of these episodes every now and then. I think they're gonna be a lot of fun. Now, if you want some more advice here on my channel, this is absolutely the most important episode that will elaborate on exactly what we're talking about today here. It goes over how to maintain proper width and profile and getting all of your details in order to get you some great looking stuff. Hit that episode next. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. For Pacific Architect Welding, my name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.